First, I'll explain what the program does, and then explain every single concept within the code. This is going to be done under the assumption you are reviewing for a basic level Java course, or you know the basics of programming and want to learn Java syntax quickly. So unless you have an IQ of 200, watch some of the basic tutorials I have here. This program is an insult generator that takes in nouns and adjectives from the user, then randomly combines one of the nouns and one of the adjectives to make an insult. You can delete words using binary search from the selection sorted array list of the nouns and standard array of the adjectives. The insults can be altered using the filter interface to be either normal, in all caps, or look drunk. You can also view the sorted nouns and adjectives and exit the program. Now let's explain the programming. Don't worry about packages, they are specific to different IDEs. Import java.util.star imports the libraries necessary for array lists and scanners. When in doubt, just import everything. Public class main declares the start of the program. This private static variable is used only within this class and is used to store strings using an array list. This does the same except in the form of a standard array, declaring the size as zero. Public static void main begins the main method of the class. Scanners allow for user input using scan as the variable. Booleans store either a binary true or false statement. In this case, the user has not tried to exit, making it false. This creates a string variable to tell the program which filter to use for the insult, defaulting at normal. These three are declarations of the three filters we will use. I'll go through the drunk one as it is the most complicated and just know the other two work the same but easier. First, the class extends filter, meaning it inherits properties and methods from it. In this case, all filters will have a method telling the user which filter is implemented and will have an insult method, so it's more efficient to have each filter inherit from a centralized class. So here's a bit about the filter class. We have a private string for the message that says which filter is implemented, and two private final strings. When a variable is final, that means it cannot be changed in the program. This is to help others understand your code and not make the mistake of changing the variable. Public filter has two different constructors. This is called method overloading. Because the normal filter technically has no filter, there is no need for the filter to send any word that references it. So all that needs to be said is filter off rather than normal filter has been implemented. Public void message just prints out what filter has been implemented, and public string insult returns the insult created by using replace all to change noun into the noun that was sent and adj to the adjective that was sent. There's also an if statement to determine if the adjective starts with a vowel, then instead of saying you are a, it says you are an. The drunk filter also says that it implements filter properties. This is an interface, which is there to define exactly what the subclass needs to have. All it needs is to have the full insult statement returned so that the main class can print it for the user. Now back to the drunk filter. First, for the method header, it calls for the inherited class using super and sends the string drunk, therefore making the message drunk filter has been implemented. For the statement, it first extracts the default insult by defining string insult with the wording taken from the inherited class using the noun and adjective sent from the main class. Now for some fun with strings. First, it replaces all L's with R's and removes all spaces. Then a new string ints is defined by the second to last two letters from insult made to uppercase that is then concatenated together back to insult. Now a simple 2x2 two two multidimensional array is created. Using a nested for loop, insult is placed into the multidimensional array in fourths. This is done by taking a substring from insult and putting that fourth first into 0, 0, the next fourth into 0, 1, then 1, 0, then 1, 1, using some difficult math. It is then returned whereas the third and fourth fourth are swapped. Also, edgedgg is added at the end for extra drunkness. After each filter is initiated, we have a do while statement that will continue to loop while exit is false. Every time it loops, it prints this. This is done by a series of backslash ends that create a new line and backslash t's that create a new tab. It's also on two lines for legibility. Now we use our scanner by scanning the next string that the user inputs and puts it into the variable command. Then we have a try catch statement which is not required for basic Java but it's very handy. Basically if there's an error in the code, like if someone inputs less than four characters causing an error when trying to create a substring, the process is caught at the bottom and stored into exception E and executes this. It prints that command doesn't exist, then prints a stack trace of the error so the user can see where the program went wrong. I used two of these on my AP exam back in high school and it saved me a few extra lines of code. The start of the if statement takes the first four characters and puts it into a string and checks if it's equal to exit, ignoring the case. 
It then changes exit to true. Since the rest of the loop is else ifs, it immediately exits the loop and exits the program. The next one checks to see if the user input insult, which would take it through some nested if statements, each checking which filter is on and defaulting at the end with a simple else under the assumption it's normal. With whatever filter, the program prints a statement created by the subclass by sending over a random noun and adjective within the arrays. Math.random creates a random double decimal value between 0 and 1. We then want to multiply that by the size of each array and convert it to an integer to get our random noun and random adjective. It's sent over to the statement method of the filter and it returns the string that's then printed. Next we see if the user wants to add an adjective. If so, the format should look something like this. An integer uses the last index of a space along with the length of the command to find the number of times the user wants that adjective in the array. The frequency is then parsed out of the string format into an integer using integer.parseInt, which is another very useful command that isn't taught often. Saves four lines of code. A new temporary array is created using the sum of the previous length and the frequency to fit the new adjective. A new string representing the user inputted adjective is stored by taking everything after the eighth cell to the last space since we know it starts with add adj. Now we use a for loop to put the previous adjectives into a temporary array. This for loop is basically saying that the integer i starts at zero and while it's less than the adjective length, after every loop it goes up by one. Then the next for loop starts i at the length of adj and loops for the frequency to fill in the new slots. We will now have to use a sort to keep the array organized. For simplicity, the program uses a selection sort for both the adjective array and noun array list. It may be useful to learn the merge sort for long run efficiency, but a selection sort is all you'll need to know for now. We'll use three adjectives as an example while running through the sort. The for loop will loop the length of the new array minus one, since by that time there will be only one slot left to deal with, making it already organized. We create an int to represent which string has the highest lexicography using its Unicode integer. In other words, representing the adjective at the top of an alphabetical list. This for loop finds which has the highest Unicode value by using the compareTo method that returns a positive integer if the former is higher than the latter and a negative if the latter is higher than the former. If the latter is higher, then the max changes to that value. So in this case, crappy is compared with awful, and since the latter is higher, the max is now indexed with the latter's value. Now awful is compared to big, and since the former is larger, nothing changes. The loop finishes and now cell i is traded with whatever the max is. The new adjective is put into a new variable. That adjective's former spot is replaced with the adjective in cell i, which is zero. Then cell i is given the new higher adjective. The process begins again except with the max starting at 1 instead of 0, since 0 is now lexicographically correct. Using the same process, crappy and big are swapped and finally the temp array is copied into the adj array. Next for adding a noun, instead of having a big chunk of code in our main method, let's outsource it to a static method. In this case we're sending over the noun and the parsed integer to noun add, whose parameters are a string for the noun and an int for the frequency. This static method is private, meaning it can only be accessed within this class, and it's a void, meaning it does not return anything. Array lists make doing a selection sort much easier and it can be done more simply. First, you don't have to make a temporary array and instead simply use the void command, add, and put it at the end of the list. And that's done for the frequency of how many times the user specifies. Next, we do the same select sort as shown before, just using different syntax. Note that it's dot size for array lists, and then at the end, instead of swapping strings, we just shove the noun with the highest Unicode value to the front by adding it to cell i, then removing its previous position. There's also a command that shows the adjectives. That just has a simple for loop and prints the adjectives in the array. Then show noun, which has a modified for loop. That means that it will loop for the length of the noun with i representing the string in the index starting at zero. It's just for efficiency. Now for the last two big concepts, which are binary search and recursion. When a user wants to delete an adjective, the user just types which one and how many times. This requires a static method in order for recursion to happen. So the marked adj and the frequency are sent over over along with zero to represent the minimum index of where the edge could be, and the length to represent the max index of where it could be. 
let's use a sorted list of four adjectives as an example and say the user wants to delete awful. First, the midpoint is found by taking the sum of the max and min and converting it into an integer. The program checks whether the adjective is equal. In this case, it's not, so it will go down to the else if statement that first makes sure that the min does not equal the max or else the adjective would be confirmed to be not in the list. Then it asks if the marked adjective is smaller lexicologically, and if it is, then del is called again this time with the min replaced with the mid plus one since we know that it's impossible for it to be below the mid, making it the new possible minimum. In this case, awful is larger so it goes to the else statement that makes the mid the new max since we know that it's impossible for it to be lower than the mid. The mid is calculated again and this time it does in fact equal the marked edge. Since this is a simple array, a temporary array with one less than the former length is created. To remake the array, the program has to put all the adjectives except the marked one into it. It's done through a for loop that enters information based on whether it's reached that index of the adjective to be deleted. Since the midpoint is zero and i starts at zero, skip is immediately made true. All this does is change the entry to be made one index lower in the temporary array to adjust for the missing cell. This temporary array is copied into the adj array, and then if the user wants to delete more than one instance of that adjective, the process would happen all again subtracting the frequency by one. Next is deleting a noun, which is much easier than an array list. The same parameters apply, and all that changes is syntax. Instead of the complicated for loop with the temporary array, all that happens is once it's found, the index is simply removed. Finally, we have our filters. All that changes is what the string filter is for when the user inputs insults. The program knows which one to use, and it prints the message of whichever filter the user commanded. And those are all the basic concepts of Java computer science, other than I'd say merge sorts and abstract classes, but a merge sort can be substituted with a selection sort, and an abstract class works similar to an interface, so there you go. Java basics in 10 minutes. I'll put all the code onto my GitHub if you're interested. And if you're studying for some kind of exam, then I would recommend trying to create your own filter to understand interfaces because that comes up a lot on AP exams. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back, Bytes.